there everyone. Here we go again with another highly important round of Miniature Dork Universe. Uh, today we'll be looking at the various manufacturers of um, late war German infantry. So the point of this isn't to review each bloody set of infantry. Um, I'm just showing you how they are in relation to one another and giving you my basic appraisal of each manufacturer so that when you go out to buy, if you haven't already bought or if you're thinking about buying, you might have a bit of background to go on. Um, so yeah, we're looking primarily at these uh, Peter Pig metals. I think they're made out of pewter, which is kind of nice. Um, the Battlefront German Grenadiers and the Plastic Soldier I think they call these Normandy Grenadiers or whatever, but you could use these guys, you know, in Italy or Russia easily. Um, so let us get started on the actual thing. I guess because well, we'll start with we'll start with the Battlefront one because this is probably the one most of you are familiar with, um, and we'll just go through and look at a few of these figures. I'll tell you what I like what I don't like, um, and we'll go through each one. And then at the end of the video, I'll show some posts. I've painted up a, a German company, um, so and I've got a mix of all of these guys, and I've used them for various things. They're all pretty nice, actually. You know, they all have their pros and cons, um, but the thing I like about all of them, well, Peter Pig, they, you buy these in small increments, so you can buy just the forces you need or the kinds of weapons you want or whatever. But the Battlefronts and the Plastic Soldier Company, the sets come with all of the basic company stuff. And then Plastic Soldier actually has the heavy weapons version as well. So, you know, for a reasonable price, you can get all of the stuff you need to do your company. And some of the battalion, um, weapons too. So if you're doing a full battalion, you can take care of that easy all in two sets. So here we go. We'll start with Battlefront. So here we go with our uh, Flames of War German Grenadiers. Overall, they're pretty good. Um, I would say yeah, they're, they're maybe a little smaller than their, their old metals. Um, but the uh, the weapons look pretty good. The the K98 rifle, eh, it's okay. It's not awesome, um, but it's okay. The uh, the MP40 looks pretty good, and the MG42s look really good in this set. Uh, the the equipment and the sculpting, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, they paint up nicely. I've painted up a bunch of these, so they do paint up nicely, and they have a variety of different gear, which is kind of fun too. Some of them just have the straight up um, late war field gray uniform. Some of them are wearing the Zaitbon shelter, and some of them have the reversible. I, I mean, they're. I think they're intended to be army guys, so this would be the the reversible smock. That was the. Uh, Oh, is that, uh, well, you know, the, the Wehrmacht camouflage on one side and then white on the inside. And they have a variety of different, some of them have helmet camouflage and some have helmet covers and some have bare helmets. There's some poses that are kind of weird in there, but overall I'd say they're pretty good. There's nothing there that's horrible. The only big criticism I have about these guys uh, is their helmets front from straight on from the front they look pretty good they look pretty reasonable but then when you flip them to the side they're very like they've been squashed like half chopped off they're very squashed down so beside let's put them beside an other German well we'll put them beside an actual metal battlefront German Hopefully you can see this in here. Put him the same way here. We'll get this guy off. So the the unfortunate thing is, is even though their proportions are pretty close, the metals are a bit more bulky, but 
the helmets just don't match up. So you won't be putting these guys on the same base together. So yeah, if you had any of these older metal kits or want to mix and match, which I like to do, I think I've mentioned this in my previous video, but I like to put different guys on the bases so that the bases all have a unique sort of character. Well, this kind of thing limits this, as well as these uh, drastic scale differences, <laughs> you know, which make me crazy, um, which leads me to the next. So I think when you're getting the late war Germans, you know, just the regular Wehrmacht infantry, you get these guys. Um, but all of the gun crews for all of their, you know, anti-tank guns and what have you, they're all these new, like, soft plastic things. And again, like with the British, they're gigantic compared to the hard plastic guys. Like, ridiculously large. So, <laughs> maybe that doesn't bother you, but it really fucking bothers me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess we all have our pet peeves. I'm sure, it, you know, other, otherwise they look all right. It's just these scale difference is just so nuts. The guy's head is like, you know, twice the size and he's almost as tall kneeling as the guy running. So yeah, there is that, which is a bit unfortunate. And I actually can't imagine why they would do that, <laughs> but there it is. And so just like the, the gun crews, and maybe the plastics, I don't know, I don't have the plastic paratroopers, the British, but the gun crews, the Canadian ones, or the British ones that I showed in the last video, they're, you know, the upper proportions are like closer to 172 scale, and then they've just crushed down the legs. So you got this Elmer Fudd looking thing with these tiny legs and these big helmets. So... Again, you might not care, right? Otherwise, the figures are, are pretty nice, and I've seen people painting them up on YouTube and whatever, and they do look good, but again, for me, it's just, it's a bit too much. So let's move on to the next round. We'll do the uh, Plastic Soldier Company next. So something I'll clarify first before I give my little appraisal of these guys is that there are two... Uh, plastic Soldier Company late war Germans. One of them is just called late war Germans and it's one of their original sort of or first kits and the figures in those are smaller and probably closer to actual 15 millimeter scale. You know probably more along the lines of Skytrex in size. Um, and these these newer ones, the Normandy Grenadiers are the bulkier figures that are you know, roughly the same proportions as your old school Battlefront Flames of War guy. Um, and they, you know, you could probably use these guys together if you have some of those old figures, which is nice. Um, I would say these guys, their heads are a bit, maybe a little bit big too, just like, just like the, the plastic Flame of War gun crew and whatever, but um, within... A little more reasonable for sure. Um, the thing I don't really love about Plastic Soldier Company is the poses. They Every set has the same poses and they all have this guy with his shoulders shrugged up which you know is actually would maybe make sense. Um, <laughs> but yeah there's just too many of those. Um, but otherwise like the K98 rifles look really good. Um, I don't have an MP40 guy. I just bought a few of these because I cut a bunch of them in half to make entrenched guys, which I'll show you. But the K98 rifles look good, um, which is kind of strange. The MG42s in this set look really bad. <laughs> like They look like they're made out of Lego. So they, you know, they did a great job on the rifles and the MP40s, and then for some reason the MG40 just looks like a piece of crap. Sorry, but... Yeah, it does. Look at it. You can see, obviously, you can see these things on websites and whatever. So if you want to investigate more, um, just just check it out for yourself. Uh, I'm mostly, again, I'm showing you this so you can have a little bit more background to decide if you're going to go into this. But yeah, the helmets look pretty good. And they have a variety of helmet covers and, and camouflage and chicken wire. 
um, consistent with what you might see in photos from Normandy. The, the helmet covers don't look like the like the issued helmet cover that they got. It, it looks like some kind of like home job and they're all like that. It would have been nice to see a few of the actual, you know, army style helmet covers, but uh, we don't have those here. But the gear, it's a little flatter, I would say, than the than the battlefront, but you know what? It'll paint up nicely. Like it's it's got nice details, so you can shade it and, and make it look pretty nice. Um, the the Zeitbahn is pretty simplistic compared to well, actually not compared to Battlefront, but compared to Peter Pig, yeah, it's pretty pretty simple. But again, it's it's a camouflage piece, so when you paint it up with all those different colors, it's not really going to be a big deal. So overall, I would say they're actually pretty good. If you wanted to just get, if you're doing a late war Wehrmacht or or even a you know a Volksgrenadier battalion, if you bought this and the heavy weapons, you'd be set. Uh, the only thing is, too, is they have a bunch of those, you know, like, kind of officer-y figures that, with pistols and things, which, you know, you probably don't need scores of those. Um, but otherwise, I mean, yeah, it would be, it would be good. They have all the weapons and the couple radios and that kind of thing, so that makes sense. So now we'll move on to the third and final, and once again, my favorite is the Peter Pigs. And now we're on to my favorite. So I, again, like with the Canadian infantry, I really like the pigs because the poses are nice. There's some weirdos, but not, not too many. Um, the proportions are a little nicer. Uh, they blend in with the old um, Battlefront 15 mils pretty well, which is nice, so you can mix and match them. Uh, their equipment, you know, this is an NCO, so uh, his equipment looks appropriate. And this is an ammo carrier, you know, he's got a spare barrel with him. Um, yeah, they're just nice. So it looks like they actually researched, which I like, you know, I'm a kind of geek like that, but they researched the equipment and uniforms for each specific fellow's job, and they made sure that all of the figures have those. And you have to buy them in small bits and pieces, but I kind of like that too, because then you buy what you need. You know, you don't need extra light machine guns or extra Panzerfaust. You need a lot of rifle guys and a few NCOs and maybe a couple radios. It's easy to get that um, with Peter Pig, um, whereas with the box plastic sets, you're pretty much stuck with what they give you. The only criticism I have with Peter Pig figures, well, there's two actually, but the main one is that the faces are quite simplistic. But when you paint them up, and because they're closer to the scale they're supposed to be, um, they look fine. Like, I find it acceptable, but you might not. For sure, the big-ass faces on those battle fronts, um, like the soft plastic figures, they're going to be a lot easier to paint, and they, they do look a lot nicer. That's true. And all of these Peter Pig figures have their mouth open. Um, so some people don't like that. Some people even criticize that. But when I think about it, I'm thinking in a battlefield, your mouth is more likely to be open than shut. Uh, I've been in the infantry reserves and uh, done, you know, drills and things, uh, battle drills and live fire shoots and things. It's it's exerting. <laughs> yeah, I don't think most of us are running around with our mouth shut. Yeah, you're breathing pretty hard. Or it's noisy and you're yelling to communicate unless you're trying to sneak up on someone. But, you know, I wouldn't say mouth shut is actually more realistic than mouth open. Uh, definitely not. So, yeah, it would be nice to have a bit more variety or maybe slightly nicer faces. But for me, that's like a very small, definitely not a deal breaker for me. And again, I'll show you some of my painted figures. The faces end up looking okay. You can do some tricks with shade and whatever and give it fairly nice. Especially for this size, they're going to shrink down. Well, you're always seeing everything exploded too, so keep that in mind. So when you shrink it down, it's pretty good. Uh, the other criticism I have with Peter Pig is just with their various ranges. So I'll tell you the ranges that all have the same size. The late war Germans, well within the Germans, 
because we're talking about Germans here. With the Germans, the late war Germans, um, and the uh, late war Germans with the Zeitbahn, that those ranges are consistent and the same size and roughly like compatible to battlefront metals in some of the some of the plastics. Uh, the the guys with the great coats, of which many can be mixed in with late war, they're also the same size and proportion. Um, they're Fallschirmjäger and they're SS guys, and there's not too many of the SS guys, they're small. So they would be more consistent if you have some Skytrex figures that you want to add um, some variety to. Uh, same with the Africa Corps. Uh, the Africa Corps are kind of in the middle. Um, they're kind of, yeah. Um, and the newer early war Germans, I would say they're they're even smaller than some of my Skytrex guys. So, yeah, be careful. Don't assume that every Peter Pig line has the same proportions. But I would say the late war British and the late war Germans, late war Germans with Zeitbahn and the, the guys with the great coats, they're, I have all of those figures and they look great. I'll show you some of the guys with the Zeitbahn now. Here's a couple of the Zeitbahns. We've got a Panzer Shrek and uh, an NCO. And again, the NCO's equipment is nice and correct for a, you know, a, either a platoon commander or a, yeah, like a platoon section leader. Uh, and same with the Panzer Shrek. He's even got his goggles on, which most of them had because the black bat back blast was pretty intense. And and the Zeitbahns with these guys are nice. Like the sculpting on them is really nice. So if you're going to take the time to paint all of the the detailing around, you know, the stitches and the and the there's grommets um, for putting pegs through because they were shelter halves. Uh, so it's got all of that stuff. And if you're not, if you're, if you're just like super speed painting, which a lot of you do, yeah, because you're not a dork like me and spend seven years doing one freaking stand of infantry, <laughs> well, uh, you might not care about that. You know, you might want to just go with the, the battlefront or the, uh, the plastic soldier and each, each set gives you a variety of like state bond and just straight up uniform and, and whatever. So yeah, but I, again, with this round, I'm going to have to go with the Peter pigs. Um, just because, yeah, the, the, the poses are nice, the uniforms and equipment look good. Uh, yeah, the rifles are a little more basic than, than say on the battlefront and the, um, plastic soldier, but uh, they still look pretty good painted up. They just have, in my eyes, they have a bit more character. They are a little bit short and chunky, just like all of these figures. Oh, and, and also let's put one, here's, this is a Battlefront um, Luftwaffe Field Division. So, you know, proportionately, the helmets and the sizes, they, they look pretty close together. And I've, I've put some of these guys on the same base, or I'm going to make a bunch of, uh, you know, if I live that long, I'm going to do some SS and some Fallschirmjager and Luftwaffe Field Division. Um, and I won't feel so bad mixing them all up if I have a mixed Kampf group of some sort. I think they'll all look good together. And yeah, I have all the old medals for those things. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't start buying those in this plastic age because <laughs> I really don't like those plastic figures. <laughs> yeah. They do look great painted up if you do a good job with it, but uh, yeah, those those weird Elmer Fuds, they're not for me. So I hope this helps you if you're deciding, trying to figure out how to do your late war German uh, infantry. And uh, I'll put a bunch of pictures of some of these guys that I've painted and how I've put them on bases and whatever. One, two, three, four.
that's it, Billy. Push those fucking buttons or I shall recede even deeper into your feeble mind.